Yeah, hello viewers and welcome to Africa in Beyond Television Network. And um, this time around, let us talk about Christopher Mutswangwa. And there is an analysis from Mkoma Brighton Mtebuka, which we need to take a look upon. It's a very important analysis because it uh, delves into Christopher Mutswangwa, his family, his son, the mistakes made, the fallout with President Maswani Mnangagwa, and the repercussions of his actions uh, following the arrest of, of his son and everything else. And it's a very detailed analysis which can't be missed. You need to hear and understand this young man called Brighton Mtebuka so as to know what is actually happening in the political arena in the nation of Zimbabwe. At this moment in time, it, Zimbabwe needs people with a discerning heart, people who can actually discern and understand what is really happening on the ground. Once you have such people, then you are guaranteed to understand the political discourse and uh, you will not miss very important issues. So I don't want to waste much of your time. Let us get straight to this whole thing. So Mkoma Brighton says, why never Mchangwa, why never Mchangwa could be in trouble? And um, while this is uh, talking about Neva Mchwangwa only, personally, um, I can extend this whole issue not only to Neva Mchwangwa, but to the whole Mchwangwa family. They are in trouble. And at this moment in time, you know, it's, most, it's difficult now to actually understand who is who, who is calling the shots, and who is actually after Christopher Mchwangwa. It's, it's now difficult to understand how everything started. So remember that in the past there were allegations that Christopher Mchangwa wanted to overthrow um, the, the current president. These are allegations and um, they were circulated on social media severally. People talked about them and some even dismissed them. But right now with what is happening, the people of Zimbabwe are now starting to actually ag agree that the the, the 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 those allegations from the past were actually true. So Mkoma Brighton says ZANPF is in Jonjo or Otamba Wakachenjera. They've always said it's prone to eating its own children from time to time. We have seen this with people like Wana Godfrey Senengamu, Wana Louis Matutu. They played a key role in making sure that Munangagwa become a president. But what happened to them? They were chased just like that and um, they were made outcasts. They have benefited nothing from um, the hard work they did to make sure that um, uh, they remove Robert Mugabe. So they say, we know that Chris Mchwangwa fairly recently fell out with ED, leading to his unceremonious exit from cabinet, while his wife, Monica, now has a pedestrian and less prominent cabinet role. And... Um, we know that Christopher Mchwango was chased from the Ministry of War Veterans. He was uh, unceremoniously dismissed from that ministry. And, uh, you know, it, it was talk of, of uh, the town. Everybody was laughing at Christopher Mchwango. And while he retained his portfolio within the NPF, then, then strategically went quiet and uh, he tried to contain himself and he tried to tow the party line. He tried to be very loyal to, to, to President Emerson Mnangagwa. But uh, what has happened right now is something else. So you know that in his absence, we have seen a series of deming letters bearing his signature with sensational content. ZANU-PF and the regime have both labeled them fake. When he was fired from the uh, ministry, we saw uh, these letters. Recently, when his son was also arrested, we saw the letters as well. And, um, you know, he says, yet the problem is that sometimes ZANPF can be engulfed in hysteria and paranoia, particularly in situations made with succession politics. You really do not know whether some of the party, some in the party or regime, can start to be doubtful or suspicious. To make matters, it's not yet clear whether or not Chris has paged things up with ED, although he appeared to be on the way to, to be doing so. One thing to note is that Vamnangagwa vane history kunza vare gerere. Ask Robert Mugabe. He used it to say avare gerere. So 
if we are to take a look on the arrest of Nefa Mchangwa, the incident itself, Monica Mchangwa then leaked an audio. The audio of Monica Mchangwa then leaked. And um, this would appear to suggest that she was rattled by the development. And, um, you, you know, uh, it, 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 it then um, gives a negative view of everything else. So you'd see that Never Mchangwa picked the worst possible moment for, for his moment of sheer folly. He recklessly displayed a WhatsApp status uh, capable of being construed is showing defiance and conduct via showing his current ZIG versus US rate. At the time, the regime is nervously and desperately trying everything to show up the beleaguered current value. So you would see that um, maybe in the past, these were simply allegations of Kumana Wachiramba, no atishu ziwe, atishu say, atishu say. But because of the connections it would be difficult for ED to make a move on without something tangible. So with that screenshot then, um, it seems as if it's somebody very close to Emerson Mnangagwa who had that screenshot. And then uh, the same person then sent uh, the, 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 the screenshot to ED prompting an order for his arrest so you'd actually understand that um remember that this happened in the absence of emerson Nangagwa. it might have been an opportunity for another person who was disgruntled with the way christopher mchangwa was uh, presenting himself within zanu pf and they decided to make a move in the absence of emerson Nangagwa. there is also a great possibility because in the past we used it to know that the team requirement and the team requirement the sons, when the relationship is going to be not that And um, that makes this whole thing more complicated and more difficult to understand. So if you take a look on uh, how clumsy uh, this young man was, it, he showed immaturity, recklessness, and uh, uh, probably conveyed an uncompleted picture a process between Chris and ED and elements in the regime who still had unfinished, uh, unfinished business with Chris. Then they went viola. So he says it is a combination of that unfinished business and conspiracies surrounding succession politics, which potentially spells doom for never. By the looks of things, the regime has been aware of never shenanigans for some time, typically um, of the regime it lets you relax, appearing not to take notice of this until such a time you cross its path like he has now done before we are proceeding to throw the book at the presumed villain mercilessly. So it seems that via that lengthy charge sheet and the customary denial of bail before the weekend, usually reserved for the regime's worst critics, we can fathom that never could be in for a chastening experience Persuade to a sending a chilling message to his garrulous and indiscreet father. Monica would not get rattled unless if she felt she had cause to via intuition, premonition, or a sense of for, uh, foreboding from either the rumor mill, recent events, or muscle memory of how ZANPF politics has been conducted over the years. And this is true. Because sometimes, you know, this is real trouble. Just imagine, Uguti, there is a moment, you name a survivor under difficult circumstances. Then, and another issue is who actually recorded that audio and why. So you'd see that there are people you might trust, Uguti, political problem, you call those people, then at the end of the day, you hear audio yaya somewhere. So you'd see that um this might this might be somebody an insider, this might be somebody trusted or this might be an issue of uh, having the regime just uh hacking uh, or intercepting the call, then record uh the, the, that call. Because remember this regime uh they reportedly acquired certain softwares and machinery 
to, to intercept calls from, um, I think it's Russia, if I'm not mistaken, or I don't know the, that country which they acquired it from. So you'd see that with that, it then shows that uh, what are they really thinking? This is just a piece of a recording from Monica Mchwango, a, just a piece less than a minute. But was this conversation less than a minute? It shows that the people who leaked this audio deliberately um, just sent a portion or a piece to, to the media simply to send a message to say, we, are, we know what you have discussed, we know what you have been talking, we know all your plans. So it means this will be a message it will send to the Mchwanga family to say, so this then becomes a problem to Muchangwa uh, and his family. They have been both caught uh, under the wrong side of the law. At this moment in time, let us remember that the, the issues is now a double issue. The issue of, um, of Sterling kids and the issue of Forex. And um, both issues, they are perceived uh, ways of trying to counter the regime. And um, that is the reason why they are under fire. That is the reason why there is problem uh, all over. And it's important to note, but it's going to actually um, bring a lot of problems and troubles for the Mchango family. They are in actual trouble. They are in real trouble. But it's very difficult to, 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 to actually understand who is actually after them. Is it the number one or is it number two? Nobody knows. That is the reason why there is confusion in the streets. Kuti. Who is who? Who is actually after these people? So, you know, politically, in Nina personally, ZANPF politics, understanding ZANPF politics, you'd see that... Um, uh, it, it's something else. Then he says, you see strange things always tend to happen in politics. Sometimes you smell these things. You can sense the relationship that is rupturing or falling apart as it seems. You see there are some relationships that are so profound in nature and character that even a minor dislocation to the establishment, uh, established equilibrium is not capable of being reconstituted, at least not easily or quickly. So, you know, all these issues, I believe that uh, Christopher Mchangwa has created so many enemies in his um, uh, lifetime and um, so many people would want to get back at Christopher Mchangwa. That is the reason why you see G40 is against Christopher Mchangwa. Everybody is against Christopher Mchangwa. And what is of note is that ZANPF, Rakashi, uh, probably... Um, Zanu PF, uh, 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 Varakashi, uh, Twitter Yendo, Pania Kanzi, what, what is the name of this Twitter Yendo? Zanu PF Patriots, they seem to be, uh, against, uh, Neve Chango. And what does that mean? It means trouble for, uh, for, for, for the boys. It means they're in trouble and it means these people are going to face difficulties for a very long time. Even if he is to be released, this is a very, very important warning sent to the Mchanga family to say, What it means is there is a great fallout between the comrades we have worked together for a very long time. And uh, we are uh, actually actually heading into very interesting moments. This is um, a very um, touching analysis from Koma Brighton, and I made a decision to come so that we talk about it. And in conclusion, we can actually conclude that there is more uh, to, to, to what we have seen. There is more, actually more things to actually take a look upon so that we understand the politics of Zimbabwe than what we've already seen individually. So it's what it is. I do not know what you think. I do not know your thoughts. Maybe we need to have a discussion. We need to talk about this thing. 
uh, honestly, this is a very conversation. What do you really think about this? Will Muchangwa get out of this easily? Who is actually after Muchangwa? Is it Mnangagwa? Is it Chwenga? So these things are confusing because um, you, 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 Mchango pa Ari Pachaki is too ambitious, which means he might be in trouble and he might be hunted by all these two factions. So it is what it is. I love you all. Thank you very much for coming. My name is Ronald Okomakusha. Let us meet in other episodes as well as other podcasts.